Welcome to Motion Story Recaps. Today I will show you a psychological thriller, crime and mystery drama. Titled Unlocked 2023. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The social life of Na Mi, Wu He Chun, on her social media accounts is thriving. She enjoys her life in both the real and virtual worlds while working as a photographer. She unintentionally drops her phone one evening as she boards a bus to return home. A man picks it up and takes it with him shortly after that. She doesn't remember the incident, though, because she is so drunk. Her friend discovers her in the same inebriated state the following morning. Before they met, a girl had already told her that Nami's phone had been found the previous evening. Naomi will make a call to this girl to pick it up once she is sober. She requests that she accompany her to the cafe, where she assists her, make a call to this girl to get it. She had no idea that the girl holding her phone was actually a guy playing voice recordings to deceive her into thinking it was a girl. Later, in the cafe, this girl calls Naomi to inform her that Nami's phone is broken and that she has sent it in for repair. Naomi travels to a dilapidated structure based on the address she is given in order to enter a mobile repair shop. She encounters this man who is concealing his identity by donning a face mask and a hat. He hands Naomi a form to complete in order to retrieve her phone. It also contains code for mobile security. This person, whom we come to know as Jun Young, Si Wan Yim, adds spyware to Nami's phone while it is being repaired. He will always be able to see her through it once she returns it. He follows her every move as a result, unaware that he is spying on her. He observes her daily activities, including where she goes, who she interacts with, and where she works, using the camera on her phone. Additionally, he has access to all of her texts and conversations. Later that night, when she goes to sleep, he makes a few more extremely intimate notes about her life. Later, Na Mi finds out about a sudden update on a secret account. She posted a picture with a co-worker during the night that shows her verbally abusing her co-workers. Her professional life is destroyed, but it also identifies Na Mi as the person in charge of it. As a result of this incident, she is fired shortly after receiving a significant promotion. In the meantime, G-Man, Kim Hee Won, the father of Jun Young and a police detective, discovers a horrifying murder case. There is no way to identify the perpetrator or find their fingerprints on the bodies of the victims. G-Man, however, notices that these bodies are buried close to the plum tree he and his son had planted because they both loved them. Recognizing a potential link between his son and the murder, through his conversations with his wife via text, he determines his location. When G-Man gets there, he discovers enough proof to link his son to the killings. He therefore continues to be in the area in order to gather video proof of Jun Young's involvement in the crime. He decides to tease and frighten his father away, though, after sensing his presence. After leaving his flat, Jun Young continues to send G-Man pictures of himself taken from a distance. While the detective is alarmed by the photos, Jun Young uses the opportunity to hide to remove the evidence from his flat. He continues to show up in Nami's life in some capacity, though, when he enters her cafe, she is charmed by his request for a plum juice that her father had intentionally left off the menu. He later sees her again purchasing a music CD from her, and during that exchange, he gives her his business card. He gets to know her through these interactions so that she won't think of him as the creepy stalker. Later, Jun Young shows up to assist Na Mi in identifying the phone hacker he describes in detail how the spyware would have operated, and Na Mi, who is gullible, has no reason to doubt him. He also leads her to believe that the only possible perpetrator is her close friend. Her father notices his odd behavior while she is under his spell and cautions her about it. She does not pay much attention to his worry, though, in the meantime, G-Man and his partner detective conduct an investigation at Jun Young's mobile repair shop. They discover the store in terrible shape, with items like papers and electronics scattered throughout the space. Na Mi shows up at that point to fix her phone, which she shattered out of rage. They discuss the case's specifics and work together to track down Jun Young. Jun Young visits Na Mi's flat after she contacts him. To find him, G-Man and his companion wait outside the structure. Only assuming that this killer is his son, G-Man Jun Young, 
aka G-Man begins to question whether or not that is really his son after catching him and seeing him in person. He is uncertain about Jun Young's appearance because they haven't spoken in years and because of this. G-Man's uncertainty is dispelled in the end. The detectives meet Na Mi and decide on a new strategy to find G-Man's location after the killer manages to avoid being apprehended. They advise her to return to her father's bungalow for her safety. When Na Mi notices her father is sound asleep, she decides not to wake him. But soon after, she discovers that her father is not in bed, so she begins searching the house for him. She arrives at that point to find Jun Young waiting for her in their hall. Furious with her for upsetting his plans. He ties her up and takes her to the loo. The bathtub is almost full of water. And her father is tethered to it. But he forbids her from exhaling a sigh of relief. After knocking her out, he beats her and leaves her on the ground. When Jun Young returns to the hallway after keeping Na Mi locked up with her father, he discovers a note that reads, No texts, only calls. He looks outside to confirm his suspicion that the police are onto him. Soon after his entry, G-Man and his companion begin beating the spooky offender. However, he still has trouble telling this person apart from his son. But the offender continues to identify himself as Jun Young. G-Man then peruses the notes that are lying around him and finds information about the murders that this psychopath had committed. He moves to position zero, where Jun Young's name is written. G-Man comes to the realization that this person is not his son but rather the assassin at that point. He kept intricate details about his first victim, Jun Young, so that he could pass for Jun Young. G-Man is emotionally broken by this realization and raises his gun to shoot the now unnamed psychopath. When Na Mi regains consciousness at that point, she takes the other detective's gun and leaves the room for the hallway. She continues by shooting him dead as a result of the roiling rage inside of her she is glad that he passed away because it means that she can now live carefree. She discovers a camera being pointed at her while spending time with her father. Despite this, make sure that you've subscribed and turn on the notification for more updates. Thank you for watching.